So this is going to be Russia versus the Ukraine. Does not seem like a fair fight. So I hope you like the video. If you do like it, please do like it. And if you haven't subscribed, please do subscribe. And thank you very much, very much for watching. Hi, I'm Mark, and this is my journey through tarot. Come on. You know, we watch from afar, and this Russia-Ukraine thing is the whole uh, problem that uh, got Trump started. He wanted to keep money from the Ukraine, which they need to defend themselves against Russia, who's already, they've already come in and taken some of their uh, land already, so Crimea. So let's see what happens uh, with Russia and Ukraine. And I'll tell you a little bit, just a little bit, about each of those two places. Okay, so here's the deal about Russia and Ukraine. Now, despite the Ukraine being an independent country since 1991, Russia perceives it as being part of its social economic sphere of interest. And after the collapse of the Soviet Union, both nations kept close ties. At issue is the Ukraine's significant nuclear arsenal, which they had agreed to abandon if Russia would assure no use of force against the independence of uh, the Ukraine. Now. The Ukraine. Now, Ukraine was a cornerstone of what was the Soviet Union, uh, second only to Russia. And it's confusing because we think of the Soviet Union as Russia and Russia as the Soviet Union, but they're uh, all uh, separate. Ukraine separate. Ukraine was the second most populous and powerful of the 15 Soviet republics. Okay. Now, and the home to, uh, Ukraine was the home to agricultural production, defense industries, and uh, military, including the Black Sea fleet and some of fleet and some of that nuclear uh, arsenal. Now, Ukraine was so vital that its decision to sever ties in 1991 was almost a final blow for Russia as a superpower. Now, Ukraine has tried to be a sovereign state aligning more with Western institutions like uh, the European Union and NATO and Western speaking uh, Ukrainian, uh, Western Ukrainian speaking peoples um, support more integration uh, uh, with Europe, but the Eastern Russian-speaking community wants closer ties with Russia. It's so confusing. Um, in 2014, when Russia invaded and annexed Crimea, they began Crimea, they began arming and helping separatists in the uh, Ukraine's southeast, and that's the first time since World War II that a European state had annexed another country. Think about that. Now, so Russia has deep cultural, economic, and political bonds with Ukraine, and in many ways, Ukraine is central to Russia's identity and vision for itself in the world. Russia and Ukraine have strong familial bonds that go back centuries, and Kiev, Ukraine's capital, is sometimes referred to as the mother of Russian cities. So, approximately 8 million ethnic Russians live in the Ukraine in the south and the east. So, Moscow claims a, a duty to protect those people. But uh, after the Soviet collapse, Russia politicians saw the divorce with Ukraine as a mistake and a threat to Russia's standing as a great power. So, since the fall of the Soviet Union, Russian nationalists in Ukraine's Crimea wanted a return to Russia you got to really follow the thread here. And the Crimean city of Sevastopol is home port for Russia's Black Sea Fleet, and Russia was Ukraine's largest trading partner. Also, Russia has relied on Ukrainian pipelines to pump its lines to pump its gas to customers in Central and Eastern Europe for decades and it continues to pay billions of dollars per year to to the Ukraine uh, in transit fees so it's it's a huge uh, complicated uh, money based and um, and um, how they see themselves uh, battle it seems like to me okay so these are Pierpoint Morgan's Visconti Sforza Taraci deck so uh, these come in a great box I mean, you really feel like you've got something of value here, and they've got some interesting stuff inside. This is the uh, these are the uh, uh, rich folks who um, would have had these cards uh, created: uh, Bianca Visconti and Francesco Sforza. So there we go with that. We dump the cards out. There's a cool instruction book back here that 
is in full color with the cards and easy to read, so that's great. So these cards are from like around the late 1700s, I think. And when you spread them out, they're huge is, is one problem, but they're very interesting to look at. I just don't know that they show up as well on um, the camera as they do in person, so I don't use them uh, on the camera that much, but they are very interesting. The court cards and the uh, Major Arcana are not too difficult to decipher, although they are difficult to decipher. This is the Fool, for instance. And, um, but the uh, Pip cards, the numbered cards, you know, you kind of kind of know your, your divination. And, you know, these weren't originally used for divination. They were just used for playing a game. And uh, somehow, I think the Gypsies got a hold of this stuff and decided to do something else with them. But uh, these will give you a run for your money. Okay, so this cool deck seemed like just the perfect one, and I always have such a hard time shuffling these cards, but I really love them. Um, but it seemed like such the perfect deck to use for this, so because of the old world feel. So let's see. So uh, Russia versus Ukraine. I mean, remember, Trump was blocking money to the Ukraine uh, to get them to agree to uh, say uh, untrue things. Uh, about uh, Biden. So that's kind of how we start to be really familiar with the Ukraine here in the United States anyway, because we're so self-centered. We only uh, think that the world exists between our sea, the shining sea. And uh, But uh, let's see, Russia versus the Ukraine. Russia versus the Ukraine. I want to know, first of all, is Russia going to Go ahead. I mean, they build up at the border, but will they invade the Ukraine? Let's get three cards for that. Two, three. Will Russia invade the Ukraine? Okay. So first card for that. Okay, I've got to count them up. This is one, two, three, four. This is the eight. Yep, this is the eight of, of wands. And the eight of wands is lots of plans, lots of issues flying at you at the same time. So this uh, makes me think, yeah, they will. But let's see what the second card is. So the second card in this one is the emperor. And so the emperor is all um, wise and knowledgeable. And uh, the emperor, I think, uh, in this case, is going to, I, for me, this seems to represent Russia. Russia things seems to feel like it is still the Soviet Union with all those countries, and it is the emperor of that part of the world. So let's see about that. And then the final card for that is, uh, okay, so what are you, oh, this is justice. So... This is very interesting because we have just to see the, the balance of scales right here. Truth, law. I wonder. I think I'm going to need another card. So will Russia invade the Ukraine? We have lots of uh, issues happening at the time. We have this emperor figure here seems to feel to me like this is how Russia sees itself as, as an, an empire of that area still. And this justice it seems to com be contrary to that. So let's take one more card to see if that helps to um, clarify this. Will Russia invade the Ukraine? And here we have the Nine of Cups, which is wishes fulfilled. I'm going to say that, yeah, that this emperor is going to get his wishes fulfilled and he's going to invade uh, the Ukraine where they're building up at the border. Interesting. So the next part of that, I want to know just with three cards, will the United States get involved uh, militarily? Will the United States become involved militarily in this conflict between uh, Russia and Ukraine? Will the United States, uh, in the short term, become involved uh, militarily? Will the U.S. Uh, go in with our troops in any capacity regarding Russia and the Ukraine? Three cards. So one, two, and three. Will the U.S. become involved militarily? Okay, first card for that 
is, uh, so this is a page of cups. Can you see the cup right here? So the page of cups is the, uh, I always say is the least, uh, uh, important of the royal cards, but he brings this compassionate, this passionate issue to court for consideration. So he's a messenger. He's bringing this. So he's brought this to our door. As a matter of fact, the next card in that ah, is death. So this is the and death is not death typically, but it is the end of a cycle. So this could be that the U.S. is what causes this to stop. Um, the ah, and the final card in this is temperance, finding a balance. So it could be. You know what? I believe the strength of the United States uh, military could be what brings Russia to a stop at some point. Maybe it's after they've already invaded. I don't know. But uh, and uh, and we uh, restore some balance in there. So that's what that looks like to me. So, but having said all of that, let's go back and say, will will Russia annex more? of uh, the Ukraine. Will Russia annex more of the Ukraine? Will Russia annex successfully more of the Ukraine? We'll do a diet across maybe a full Celtic. We'll see how it goes. One, two, three, four, five, and six. Will Russia annex more Ukraine. Interesting. Signifier card for that. Okay, so this is the King of Wands. The King of Wands. Wands are uh, um, actions, plans, uh, the future. Uh, and so the signifier of that question, will Russia annex more of the Ukraine, is this King of Wands, a King of Action, King of Plans. Hmm. So it could be that that is, in fact, their plan. Let's see what else comes up. The challenge to that, then, is uh, this Nine of Cups, again repeated, so that's wishes fulfilled. So the challenge to that plan is having their wishes fulfilled. And this is a very compassionate, emotional uh, card here, wishes fulfilled. I need to go on to another card to get more clarity in this. The base of this reading then, for look at that, repeating again. So this page of uh, Cups here, just like I said before, is what brought this issue to the front here. Okay, the past of this reading, okay, with this Three of Swords is long-term planning, long-term planning. And, you know, it says here in French, a good right. So Russia, I think, believes they have the right to go in there and, and because there are uh, people living there who themselves align more with Russia than they do with the Ukrainian side. So in the past, uh, maybe Russia is going to pick up on this feeling of, of uh, for a long-term plan to become back part of Russia. In the sky of this, we've got wands, one, two, three, four, five. So this is the 10 of wands. And the 10 of wands is just a huge load. It's a heavy load to carry. And so I'm gonna say with this 10 of wands that um, it's going to be um, a huge uh, load for that to happen. The likely outcome of this with this Four of Cups, and it's amazing how this remains such a compassionate, emotion-filled uh, issue. This Four of Cups, typically in the right-of-way system, this is being offered, you know, one cup that maybe you don't particularly want. Um, it looks like they may bring that other cup into the fold. So I think they may be successful in that. But let's go uh, four more cards and make this a full Celtic cross to see what happens. Okay, well, Russia Annex more of that country. The self of that question uh, is strength. Yeah, it's the strength of Russia that um, that helps to determine this. Okay? It's in the environment of what? It's in the environment of uh, how many do we have here? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine of swords. The nine of swords, I want to make sure I have a very good definition of this. The nine of swords um, let's see, uh, shame, hopelessness, yeah. The Nine of Swords is really feeling embattled. So the strength of this uh, action happening is really feeling embattled. I wonder if this can be the Ukraine uh, represented in that uh, card right there. So let's see, really feeling embattled. Uh, the hopes and the fears, will Russia invade? Hopes and the fears of that. 
Okay, this is the magician. So this is the, the card where he has everything that he needs to pull off his magic trick. So this has to be the Ukraine, hoping that they're able to pull together what they need to defend themselves in this. And then the uh, likely outcome of the whole thing will Russia invade is um, this King of Swords. And the King of Swords is truth, justice, rules, and law. I'm going to say that this King of Swords uh, is Russia with their uh, feeling of entitlement uh, towards uh, that part of the world. So, yep. Yep, I think that's exactly what's going to happen. So just to go over it again, we start out here with the um, uh, the King of Wands. So, yeah, that's what it is. This is Russia. Russia comes in as the King of Wands. They've got a plan that they want to make happen. They're challenged by um, these uh, this Nine of Cups, very emotional uh, situation uh, of wishes uh, wanting to be fulfilled, called the Greedy Merchant. So yeah, Russia's going to go in then with all their trophy of strength and to try to make this happen. Uh, the base of this reading, with this page of Cups, remember Cups are, again, emotional. So this is just the beginning uh, of, of this emotional situation. This must be the people uh, who f feel more aligned with, with Russia than they do the other side. And then with this... Uh, Three of Wands, this is long-term plans. This is Russia, again, feeling their right to be in there. Then we had with this one, two, three, four, five, uh, ten of uh, Wands, heavy load, a big burden to make happen. But with this Four of Cups, I think they're going to take that one more cup into their fold. The self of that question, will uh, will it happen? Yeah, the strength of Russia is what they're going to rely on. One, two, three, four, eight, this Nine of Swords is the embattlement that's going to take place there. And then the magician is really trying to pull everything out of their bag of trips for it to happen. And Russia uh, here is now become, instead of a king of plans, a king of swords and has create, made this thing happen. That's what I think. Well, that's what we get. So I just want to remind everybody, you know, I'm no um, uh, social uh, expert and, and, and world politic uh, knowledgeable person. No, that's not me. I just kind of Google or Wiki what I can find, put up there to the best of my ability. I may get cities and countries and some things wrong. So do your research. But anyway, this is what we got. I hope it was useful. I hope you enjoyed it. And um, let's see what happens in the world. I'm Mark, My Journey Through Tarot. Tomorrow's another day. Stop by. We'll do it again. Ciao for now.